Over the past few weeks, I've been spending a lot of time planning, budgeting, and deciding on whether it was time to go balls deep or not and build my first FPV drone. And after scraping up all the couch money I could find and every red cent in the center console of my car, I finally managed to get one built. If you've seen any of my other videos, you may have noticed that every drone that I have, other than this one, has a DJI 03 Air unit on it. I love the quality of the video I get. I love the flat color profile. It allows me to color grade my footage. I love the size of the action camera. I'm currently on my second one. And I've also purchased Pocket 3s for my wife and I. The point here is, regardless of how one may feel about DJI, objectively, they make pretty good shit. Now that how I feel about DJI is out the way, I've kind of been looking for a reason to switch things up. I kind of wanted to take things that I liked about my other drones and fit them into one cool custom build without using the DJI 03 air unit. Which led me to plan a build around the Walksnail Moonlight system, which is the direct competitor to the 03 air unit. I'm a sucker for 4K video, it is what it is. 4K! The functionality is similar enough for the price, <laughs> the Walksnail Moonlight camera is almost just as good as the DJI 03 camera, and during periods of time during the year where I have to work late into the afternoon, say fall for example, when the sun goes down fairly quickly here in Kentucky, I can go out and still at sunset have very nice video quality, unlike the DJI 03 where <laughs> if I tend to go out past 6 during fall, the quality of the video is trash. And one of my biggest gripes about the Walksnail Moonlight system is there's no flat color profile, but I guess I'm just going to have to get over that. It was really easy to wire to the flight controller and it also tells you the connections right here on the side. And there's also a standard wiring guide posted by Oscar Lang that I think applies to all, if not most, Walksnail systems. I do feel kind of weird about having the power connection out to the side like this, so I tried to coil it enough to be snug to the side of the VTX. As for the goggles, I went with the Goggles X and unfortunately I do not have them on hand because when I ordered them they were for pre-order and I have no idea when they will be shipped. Yeah. My next course of action was to pick the frame. The first frame that I looked into was the Source One V5, which is apparently the go-to frame for most people. Apparently it's really good for the price and there's a lot of replacement parts as well. My second choice was the Quad Mula Siren Split S, which looked super dope and I was this close to buying it. But this is when I happened to come across a video done by Joshua Bardwell about the Mata 5 Tour X. I really think Axis should get this fixed. Um, it's supposed to be Truex, not Tourex. <laughs> I think their web editor is drunk. Julian. And this frame caught my attention because it's very similar to the Monta 3.6 frame that I have right here. So I'm familiar with the quality, functionality, durability. I'm familiar with ordering from Axis Flying and it's a classic Truex design. And it's also my first Truex design. I have a squashed X, a dead cat, a wide X, so why not, right? But if you find yourself wanting a different variation of this frame, they do have dead cat and squashed X versions on their website, as well as some spare parts, mainly arms and top and bottom plates for when your drone explodes. There were two things that I had to modify on the frame. The first being the XT60 connector holder or whatever it is on the top plate. It's made to have these XT60 connector heads sit flush here, but I'm not a fan of that at all and I didn't like it on my Nazgul either. I'd rather just have the XT60 cable pulled through and tucked under the straps, but the hole was too small and too tight. So I went to Lowe's, bought a pack of handheld files and made it bigger. The frame comes with files and to be real, they are trash and I had no idea what they were for, but I guess I do now, so I learned something. Once I got the hole filed a little bit bigger, we were good to go. The next thing I had to do was replace the antenna holder. The walk snail antennas didn't fit at all and I don't know what antennas would fit through here. <laughs> These holes are big as shit. But if you know, throw it in the comments and help someone. 
I ended up having to order some Brain 3D mounts that came in two days, so shout out to them, and they fit perfectly. And I do want to point out that the antenna holders that come with the kit will most likely have to be filed down because they do not sit flush with the standoffs at all. So you heard it here first. But it's a nice sturdy frame and comes with mad screws and two reflector battery straps just like the Monta 3.6. It also comes with a little guide for how to build a kit, which is trash to be honest. I ain't even gonna hold you. I wouldn't even look at that. I would go straight to the website. The guide on the website has a little more detail and it will most likely help you way more than that little flimsy paper guide they give you. Next up, we have the motors. Initially, I was going to go with Zing 2 motors because I love them. They're on my Nazgul and they just make the drone float, man. It's awesome. But I also like the Eco 2 motors on my Speedy B, which are not as powerful, but they still offer a smooth and punchy flight experience. I wanted something that was the best of both worlds and I happened to come across a review on these. The Rush FPV Faroque motors and the review was done by Murders FPV who had nothing but great things to say about them. They are 2505 2000 KV motors and they're supposed to be really smooth and not super power hungry so I was sold on them and they look dope as hell. To protect the wires I purchased some braided sleeving and wrapped them in electrical tape. For the stack, I went with the F7 V3 30x30 Speedy B stack, and it's the same thing that I have in my Master 5 V2, and I love it. I did look into the 405, but I ended up going with the F7 because of familiarity, and it was on sale. Another interesting thing about this stack is if you wanted to, you can bypass having to directly solder most of the components because it comes with a ton of connectors for LEDs, a GPS, and a camera. For the props, I went with the Ethix Mango Lassies. I've been flying them for a while now and I love them. They're lower pitched props and they give me a little bit more control in the air, or at least that's how they make me feel. I also needed a buzzer, so I went with the V Fly Finder 2, which is super duper loud and annoying, like a buzzer should be. <laughs> the more obnoxious, the better. I'd put a clown horn on my drone if it meant I'd find it all the time. <laughs> As for the weight without a battery, we are looking at 467 grams. With the battery, we are looking at 697 grams. And when we add an Action 2 camera, we are coming out to around 758 grams. And if we compare it to a super popular bind and fly like the Nazgul V2 with everything on it, the Nazgul is 796 grams, which I guess is to be expected because the Nazgul has a more robust frame and a GPS. And my custom build is also lighter than my Speedy B Master 5 B2, which comes in at around 769 grams. So I expect to be able to throw around my custom build quite a bit. I mean, it's not the lightest thing in the world, but I'm also not coming in like a wrecking ball. Overall, I think the build went pretty good. I didn't go into it wanting to have a theme of black, cyan, and yellow, but it's just how it turned out, and the colors surprisingly work really well with each other. The only thing left to do at this point is pit tuning, and I've never done that before, so that should be something. Once I get that done, I'll go throw it into a tree or something. But really. As for a flight test, Again, I do not have the goggles on hand at the moment, but when I do get them, I will do a part two continuation of this video. In the meantime, let me know what you think about the build. Give me some frame recommendations. Tell me what you would have done differently. Do you like it? Do you hate it? I don't know. What would you rate it on a scale from one to 10? Thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe. Catch you later.